Hello and welcome to this Project in the Box tour. In this tour we're going to be taking a look at using the DSDM a turn method within Community Edition. For those of you not familiar with Community Edition, it was launched in early 2005 and now has over 30,000 users in 150 plus countries um, who've been predominantly using it as a way of uh, learning PRINCE2 uh, or putting PRINCE2 into practice as they finish their training. Um, it's an uh, it's inherently simple, straightforward application uh, which is provided completely for free so you can use it uh, as widely as you want to, as long as you want to on as many projects. And a big change has been the release of version 2.0 which we brought out uh, in April 2009 um, which is now multi-method capable and uh, to, uh, to celebrate that we've added the uh, DSTM return method to the product um, and providing a, an additional range of uh, methods that users can download and add themselves as they want to. So it's a .NET product um, and uh, that makes it particularly easy to install on most PCs where the .NET framework will already be present. Um, and when we've uh, installed it we get a desktop icon like this. Simply double click to start and we're given a, um, a getting started pane which, which prompts us to either open an existing project, create a new project, move on to help etc. Um, so uh, we'll have a look at creating a new project um, to add an return project to uh, to my system. And you can see here I get uh, to pick from a list of method templates. So as I say, as standard we would have the uh, the CP2, PRINCE 2008 method, and the return 2 method. Um, so in this case I'm going to select a turn and I'm going to give the project a name. And create. Okay, so that's finished, and now I can uh, access my project from the File menu, Open Project. And you'll see immediately that um, you're presented with uh, what, what are hopefully familiar diagrams from a turn. Um, and uh, we can see the pro lifecycle process here. And the idea is uh, very simply, for our current project, we can click through the diagrams and it will show us the documents and the processes we're supposed to be using at any point in time. Or we can access additional information, guidance and uh, user information, uh, project roles, etc. Um, or a project document library from the, uh, the areas at the bottom. So if we start off by selecting pre-project, you'll see that that populates for me into the file explorer on the right hand side and shows me the documents that the methodology recommends I should be using at that point in time. And within the documents I have some files. And as I select each particular file I can see that this was a, um, a template that's just been added today as I've just created uh, the project. Um, so as I work my way through the process I can see that the, the documents that it's recommended I might work on changes. Um, and I can see I have some templates for those. And in some places I'm given um, uh, areas that it's recommended I might have material as the project progresses. So I can store information about my evolving solution in the same areas information about my project management. So hopefully that idea is fairly straightforward and we can work our way through the process um, updating documents as we go. Same thing as I say applies for uh, the areas at the bottom here and we'll come back and look at those in a second. So let's have a look at some of the, uh, some of the documents themselves. So what we've done is, you'll notice these are official um, diagrams they're from the uh, from the Etern manual. Uh, we've licensed those diagrams so that make sure you get an authentic view of the method rather than our interpretation of it. And in the same way, we've also licensed the um, official template pack for uh, the SDM Etern. Um, and the templates that we provide here are exactly the standard templates, but with the um, inbuilt guidance removed. So. Uh, exactly the same areas that you would fill in there. So if I select a particular example here, we can see we have some purpose information, some hard copy document management information if we wish to use that. As we'll see in a minute though, um, Project in a Box will do some document management for us, some configuration management, so we don't necessarily need to record that information here. Um, contents and then the spaces to fill in information about what it is we're doing on the project. So I simply clicked on that file and I can see I've got a read only, a view copy of this file that I'm just opening for information. So I can close that if I want to. If I want to actually make some changes to this file, I uh, do checkout and we can see as I put up my cursor over the button, 
the hover tells me some information about what it is that I can do from that location. So um, document management system, configuration management built into the product. So as I click on that, I can then open the uh, file up. And this time you'll, you'll notice it's, given, it's got a version number. It doesn't have read only because it's, um, it's a version that I'm uh, able to change. So I can come in here and I can write some things about the project approach, what's going on, etc. And just simply save that and close it. If I want to go back and view that and do some more work on it at any time, um, the, system, the system will have put the file in what we call a checkout folder for me. And I can now uh, view my checkout folder for this project. And I can see that I've got that uh, document there. I could open it up and work on it. And I can see I've got another file in there that I was uh, working on uh, earlier from another project. So um, it keeps a track of the files that I'm physically working on at present that I have checked out and I can open those to work on again. If I'm ready to put the file back in now, I can now do one of two things, either check in or undo the checkout. Check in will put it back and raise the version. Um, undo checkout will release that back uh, with the, without the changes that I've applied. So if I check that file back in, you can see it's gone off to find that in my uh, documents area. I can put a description in saying, And you'll see that the system has now recorded that as an additional version. Um, and what happens here is uh, Project Notebox retains each copy of the file separately. So I can, if I want to, go into my version history here, and I could decide to view the uh, original version or the current version from that list. We can only ever view, though, um, old versions. The only one we can ever check out and change is the current version of the file and if we now clicked on this in the tree we would get obviously the current version with the comments that I've made so very simple to start with a standard set of templates a process we don't have to refer back to too much documentation because it's laid out for what we're supposed to do at each particular point and we can progress our project really very quickly as our project progresses though we're going to be wanting to add lots of additional information we collect a, a huge amount of information as we work on our project additional documentation, meeting notes, um, all those sorts of things. And this is a great place to keep that information as well. So perhaps one of my colleagues um, has sent me an email about the, uh, about the plan. So if I've selected the plan within Project in a Box here, I can just grab this email and drop it on. Um, if I want to rename that, I can. I'll give it a description. So I can say, uh, from Guy. Um, and that's now appeared within my uh, documentation and I can do the same sort of thing with any other documents I want to to add to bring in that are appropriate to the projects I'm currently working on um, very very simple to do that and, and it has to be simple otherwise people won't won't use it properly once a files in here you see it follows exactly the same configuration management approach as any other and uh, when we open the file it simply opens in um, uh, in the application that's associated with it. So this is an MSG file, so it opens in Outlook. Um, couldn't be simpler, and that means that you can store and manage any sort of file that you want to. Um, there's no restriction imposed on you by Project in a Box to do that. So say so very simple to add new files as they come up. Sometimes, though, we've got other sorts of information we want to add. We might have um, some sort of documents that we use again and again and again, and the method will only provide us with one example um, of those usually. Um, so for example, uh, we may have um, a lot of solution developers within our project team. So we could, um, uh, we've at, we always have a template to add the first one. If we want to add the second one though, we can select the template from here and, um, and therefore documents that we use again and again can be loaded very easily. The other sort of thing we might want to do, and this is a very popular feature, is rather than store the file here, we can store a link to the source of the uh, of a file. So, for example, policies and procedures, um, ISO standards, things like that. If you bring the document into the project and the master document changes version, you're looking at an old copy. So what you can do instead is you can store a link. So, for example, if I um, went off to the internet and uh, found a website I was interested in, I can simply copy the address for that and I can put in my target area here give it a name and a description and that now appears 
in uh, in my tree here um, and when uh, I click on that it takes me off to that website couldn't be uh, again any easier great for sharing information and um, uh, bringing everything that we need for the project together into one place okay um, want to show you a couple of other things around uh, guidance and um, additional materials provided within uh, this method so obviously we've got um, uh, we've got the templates here and they have some outline information in them um, but it's very helpful to be able to provide uh, some additional guidance so we've again licensed material authentic material from uh, the DSTM consortium to provide to you um, as part of this free package the guidance sits behind um, this uh, icon here we've done several things we've provided some inbuilt um, outline guidance so even if you have no internet access there's something here on the machine for you and it's a uh, well, it's a 30-page document taking you through um, how we've used a turn within Project in a Box, some principles, um, the life cycle stages, roles, um, concepts, that sort of thing. So some background reading you can do here um, about uh, about the uh, the methodology. And we've also, um, uh, in addition to the standard templates that we've licensed from DSDM, we've also provided some uh, of our own, um, in particular around project team appointments, uh, roles, summaries, that sort of thing. Uh, we find it's very important, obviously the first sort of thing people do when they start a project is they start appointing people to a project. It's very important to have those sort of documents immediately available for you. So we have um, a simple role summary. Uh, that you can go to in one place and see who's involved in the team, what sort of thing they're doing, get some basic background on that. Um, and then, as I say, we have a standard set of um, appointments for each of the uh, typical um, standard roles on a, on a turn project, giving some idea of the responsibilities and overview of that particular role and who's been appointed to it. So helpful stuff just to get you up and running very quickly. Um, as you work your way through the methodology, um, and get beyond the uh, foundation stage, you're going to want to go into some increments, um, uh, time boxing and, uh, and multiple uh, delivery phases of the, uh, of the project. Um, when the project is, uh, is started, it won't have any increments within it because you, we don't know how many you're going to create. Uh, you may create one, you may create five, you may create ten. Um, and so adding increments is very simple. Click on the increments area, manage increments, and then we can... Um, Create a new one, give it a name, and then we see the documents associated with that. So as we move into the exploration phase, we have project level exploration documents and documents associated with the exploration of uh, increment one. When we then finish increment one and we move on to increment two, when we finish the exploration and the engineering parts of that, we can come back now the second increment and we'll get a we'll get another time box plan another review record another deployment plan for the end of the deployment of that increment so um, helping us through those repeatable parts of the methodology as well um, and very important to have that flexibility to build as uh, as you need to okay so sort of reaching the end now I've talked about a turn I'm just going to introduce you to some of the sort of standard features of, of um, community edition and the other methods so just very quickly um, we have uh, within the options area here um, the ability to do quite a lot with our um, uh, with our application so a particular thing is portable mode so the default would be to install project in a box into program files so for that you need admin permissions um, and it's then on your PC and you can run it as long as you want to another alternative is to move it to portable mode because it's a .NET application um, it can run essentially as a series of files um, on top of the .NET framework within a host PC. So if we move it to portable mode, you'll see in the standard mode, most of the applications and uh, templates and core information is in the program files area. Uh, and the rest are scattered around my user profiles. If I switch to portable mode, um, you'll see it's moved everything into a, a subfolder. That means that I can take that folder put it on a USB stick or move it to my documents if I want to and operate Community Edition from outside of program files. Um, 
And that's great because uh, I won't need admin permission to do that. And that means I can take, if I'm a contractor or if I'm, if I'm learning the methodology, I can take my application and all my working files, things I'm checking in and out, things I'm viewing on a USB stick uh, from PC to PC. Um, and, and it won't leave any footprint of what I'm doing on the host PC. Very, very helpful uh, for, uh, for people who want to take the, uh, the system with them on the go. A couple of other things in here. Um, language. Um, we uh, currently have just have a, a, an English language file, which is the default file on the application. But uh, visits to our page um, at projectinabox.org.uk um, will give you uh, the ability to download additional language files over time so that you can use the interface in, in uh, different languages. And then as I say, I just wanted to introduce you also to um, some additional methods. So uh, I have a standard print project here. Um, Prince is the method that uh, most people are familiar with in Community Edition. Um, and uh, again, it's licensed material from the OGC, full standard set of templates. Um, we don't actually provide any guidance material here, um, but you've got the full set of processes and the full 40-odd management products. So giving you the choice of using a turn or Prince, depending on the particular project. And if you're learning or wanting to compare methods for which one's the right one for you, then this is a great way of, uh, of doing that. So I hope you found that helpful um, and that uh, you have a great time with uh, Community Edition, uh, A Turn and Print. Um, you can download Community Edition for free. Um, you just need to visit uh, the download area either on Project Box website or on the A Turn website. Thank you very much.